All right, coaching carousel continues to turn. Robert Sala will be the next head coach of the New York Jets. Sala was the 49ers defense coordinator for the last three seasons. He has never been a head coach at any level, but known for building a good defense and having an aggressive and fiery personality. Speaking of aggressive and fiery personalities, there he is, Pete Frisco, our NFL insider, been covering this game 30 plus years. All right, um, why Sala and do you like this fit? I do like this fit. I think this is a guy, when you look at him and what he can do, he'll bring an energy to a team that needs it. Let's be real. That thing was flat. They've had all kinds of problems. Uh, and this guy is a high-energy coach. And all the players that I've talked to over the years raved about him. And when he was a, a linebacker's coach in Jacksonville, they raved about him there, too. This is a good football coach, and a lot of teams are after him. All right. Um, he's a defensive guy. Problem with the Jets, first and foremost, is offense. Yeah, you know, what are you gonna do with Sam Darnold? Who's gonna so who's gonna be the offensive coordinator? Now, Matt LaFleur, the Green Bay Packer head coach, he was the best man Sala was at LaFleur's wedding, but he ain't gonna get him out of Green Bay where he's the head guy. So is it his brother? Is it somebody else? I mean, who's gonna be in charge of an offense that needs to come around? You know, I think this is going to be a, a situation where Mike LaFleur, Matt's brother, who worked for the 49ers, will be in play as the offensive coordinator. And I'll give you another name. Mike McDaniel, the running game coordinator for the 49ers, is also probably in play as well. And by the way, this will be a perfect system for Sam Darnold. They put the 49ers offense in. He can get outside on the move. He can make throws off of the run, uh, the zone run scheme. I think this is a great situation for Sam Darnold because they will run the 49ers offense. Mm, they, it may be a little different when it's not Kyle Shanahan's genius designing and calling up plays, but certainly it's a copycat league. Um, now, I always sort of play devil's advocate because there's a lot to like about this hire, undoubtedly. This guy's never been a head coach. Not, not never been a head coach in the NFL. He's never been the guy at any level for any team ever. What's your level of concern there? You know, it's not really a concern because I think it's just football. And, and if you know how to delegate, handle people, hire good coaches, and motivate, you'll be a good coach in the NFL. I think sometimes we put way too much stock in the X's and O's of things rather than the people side of things. And, and Robert Sala is a guy who will get his players to play hard. He'll bring a good, hard-working culture to the organization. And you hire good coaches and you let them coach. He was a guy who was a defensive coordinator, was allowed to coach. And now he's the head coach, and I think he's got to hire good people, particularly on the offensive side of the ball. That doesn't worry me at all. Okay. Uh, you mentioned, and I want to get back to the offense for a second, we talked a little about Sam Darnold. They have the number two pick. They have a lot of cap room. Do you expect that Sam Darnold is their quarterback next year? I mean, Joe Douglas is the GM. He has a six-year deal. He's in the middle of it. He's the guy. This is not like in Jacksonville where it's Urban Meyer's show. This is a dominant GM, and now he's hired his coach. The GM will have personnel say. Do you think Sam Darnold is going to be the guy in this offense? I do. I think they will ultimately leverage that pick and try and get extra picks, uh, and they will keep Sam Darnold. Uh, sometimes you look at the situation. You didn't get Trevor Lawrence. In my mind, in a lot of people's minds, a lot of the scouts I talked to, he was the generational quarterback. There's questions after that. So maybe there's a team that doesn't have a quarterback that's willing to go up and make a deal to maybe get Justin Fields or even Zach Wilson of BYU. I think the Jets can leverage that pick, get a bunch of extra picks, and stack the roster and get more players. But build it around Sam Darnold in that zone run scheme. There you go. Pete Prisco doing an excellent job for us as always. Always love having you on, bud. You got it. All right, here's your draft order. Jacksonville, new coach. See, when you're a bad team, you fire the coach a lot, right? So, new coach in Jacksonville, new coach for the Jets. Texans, they're going to have a new coach, but they don't have a pick because they traded away to Miami. Falcons, yeah, new coach. Bengals, well, they're bad and rebuilding, but you know, that guy probably going to get one more shot. Eagles, new coach. Lions, new coach. Panthers had a new coach last year. I mean, you see the pattern here. Bad teams have new coaches, and new coaches get good picks, including the Jets at number two. 
Oh, here's our guys. Here he is, Will Brinson, get it done. And Ryan Wilson, my guy, every Sunday all year, <laughs> Ryan and I hung out and watched all the football games and did the show. It was terrific, and he is our draft expert, made me smarter sitting next to him all season long. So, Ryan, let me go to you first right now. Jets, they hire Salah. What can you read into this, if anything, about who that what they might do with the number two overall pick? Yeah, that's going to be the question, EK. I took a quick scroll around the, the Twitterverse before hopping on here, and Jets fans are, are pumped. Sometimes you see these hires, and, and the fan of these teams aren't very excited. But now the question becomes with Joe Douglas at GM, now they have their coach and Robert Sala. What's going to happen at number two? You sort of felt at the end of the season, once they lost it on Trevor Lawrence, that they would try to do a couple things. One, maybe trade down out of that number two pick if they don't love someone like Zach Wilson out of BYU or Justin Fields out of Ohio State or even Trey Lance out of North Dakota State. Or maybe they stay put and take someone like Panay Sewell, the offensive tackle out of Oregon who opted out this year. They took Mackay Becton last year. You draft Panay Sewell, have bookends at offensive tackle for the next decade, and then you move forward with Sam Darnold. These are questions they'll have the next few weeks and months to figure out. Uh, but Trevor Lawrence is off the table. They have to figure out plan B. The good news is they have another first-round pick later in this draft, thanks to Seattle's trade for Jamal Adams. But uh, as I sit here right now, and you, you put me on the spot, I'm going to say they're sticking with Sam Darnold. If they can't trade down, and I imagine they will be able to, they'll go with someone like Panay Sewell. Okay, fair enough. Now, Will, uh, they say you're the naysayer of the group. I've always found you to be quite affable and, and <laughs> lovable. I love Will Brinson, but if I'm a Jet fan, sure, I've hired the guys, so now i got to be supportive. But what would your concern level be that this guy has never, ever, 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 ever been a head coach of anything, including a Pop Warner team? Yeah, I mean, that's a concern, yes. Now, I would counter that by saying that Adam Gase, prior to being the Jets coach, was a head coach before that. So, zig when they want you to zag, EK, would be my would be my suggestion there. I think what's really interesting about Robert Sala as Jets head coach, to me, is that we've all seen it over the last two years because the dude gets more airtime than Kyle Shanahan. His energy is infectious. He's, in, he's insane on the sidelines. He's constantly being showed. He has, like, two or three get-back guys. He might need four five is the head coach when he's launching out on the field being pumped up about how his defense is playing and maybe most importantly he has a pipeline to the Shanahan LaFleur uh, connection from an offensive standpoint in the sense that as we understand things and I believe Jason Lock and Fora are in a CBS Sports NFL Insiders reported this Mike LaFleur the 49ers passing game coordinator is his likely offensive coordinator that's a big get for the Jets in my opinion because if you you look at how Kyle Shanahan's offense runs and how, you know, uh, LaFleur's older brother, Matt LaFleur, has worked in Green Bay. Things have gone very well. You would assume that they're going to bring this, you know, kind of power run game that builds off of that with different sort of levels, a bunch of play action, and you can incorporate, um, you know, you don't need like an elite group of wide receivers to make it work. We've seen that with the 49ers. So we'll see how that all plays out. But I, look, this Jets team has been mired in mediocrity for years. They need an energy guy. They need a culture changer. They need someone to come in with an enthusiastic attitude who's not staring off at tacos, imaginary tacos, mind you, in his in, in introductory press conference. And I think Robert Sala is a home run hire. I don't know if he's going to work out. Nobody does because that's how NFL head coaches work. It, it, you, if they're taking the, the first dive, you can't be sure. But this guy is going to pump Jets fans up. He's going to have a great press conference. And I think between – if Joe I, – I trust Joe Douglas. I think Joe Douglas is a smart football guy. I do too. And him and Robert Sala, that combo, I dig it. Well, uh, tell me the guy that I can say if I'm a Jet fan that this guy is going to be reminiscent of. I mean, look, Pete Carroll's a defensive guy, and he's an excitable guy, but he's more of a CEO type, right? And he had been a head coach in a lot of different spots. But you have a lot of these mumbly, grumbly types that get there, and they're not the – Belichick, Frank Reich, you know, that kind of guy. Who's the defensive guy who's the fireball who now becomes the CEO and is still the fireball? I, I mean, I think – now, this is not going to be a great comp because of how things worked out this year. 
but I'm going to say he's sort of like a Dan Quinn type. And I know that doesn't sound great because Dan Quinn just got fired, but Dan Quinn took the Falcons to the freaking Super Bowl. And remember, he hired Kyle Shanahan as his offensive coordinator. You have a similar scheme defensively in terms of that cover three coming from Seattle. You have a high energy defensive mindset who's going to uh, going to be a CEO type, I think. And then you have him bringing in sort of that Shanahan LaFleur type of offense that you're going to run there. So if it works, I think it could work out really well. I don't think anybody can definitively say that the Jets will be awesome. That's a big stretch. But I do think that that like the, the first couple of years under Dan Quinn in Atlanta were very good until they lost that Super Bowl. If Robert Sala gets the Jets to the Super Bowl, if he achieves what Dan Quinn achieved in Atlanta, I think that's kind of a rousing success given how where they've been for the last 11 years. All right. Jets don't have a lot of... Uh... Let's just say their 1 through 53 isn't the best in football. Doesn't mean they're devoid of talent. And it seems like they had a pretty good draft last year. The free agency was more of a mixed bag, but it seemed like they had a pretty good draft with Joe Douglas. Now they're going to have that second pick. How good a job is the Jets' job, Ryan Wilson? Oh, it's a great job. And by the way, the, the Brinson-Dan Quinn comparison – that, that couldn't be more wrong. Dan Quinn has all the energy of someone who's staring at a wall for eight hours. I put him I on love the Dan spot. Quinn. He gave you He's something. He's a nice guy. I know, but Dan I put Quinn. him on the spot. Dan, yeah, I mean. Dan Quinn is high octane, baby. <laughs> <laughs> here, here, here's my comp, EK, before I answer the question you actually asked me. He's going to be like Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin's a defensive guy, high-energy guy, and I say this all the time on the podcast. Uh, you don't need someone who knows X's and O's. Adam Gase is a genius with X's and O's. Adam Gase is the world's worst coach. I think Robert Sala has to be able to motivate these guys. That's what you're looking for. Brinson's right. Joe Douglas, by all accounts, knows exactly what he's doing. And I think Robert Sala is going to be a home run in, the, in that instance. You surround yourself with smart guys. Your job is to motivate. You don't need to micromanage. Wow. Now, in terms of what the Jets can do, they have a ton of draft picks. They have six of the first 100. They have the second, 23rd, 34th pick. You can stock up on all sorts of guys, whether you want wide receivers, whether you want the offensive tackle that I mentioned. You could take a quarterback. You can get someone like Najee Harris to help Sam Darnold out if he's your quarterback in those top 34 picks there's any number of ways you can go because as you mentioned they don't have a ton of playmakers so anyone you take who turns out to be good will help this football team so the defense actually wasn't as bad as the offense that's not saying a whole lot they moved on from greg williams obviously but i think if you surround sam darnold by protecting him number one get him some playmakers denzel mims their second round pick last year sowed some flashes get a running back unless you think frank gore's gonna play he's till he's 200 years old you might be on to something. Now, they're a year or two away. Granted, they're not as close as I feel like the Jaguars are with their Meyer hire, but I think they have a chance to, to make some some moves in the right direction. If they win seven or eight games next year, that, that's a home run in my mind. Listen, I'm happy if I'm a Jets fan, right? I mean, when I wanted to flush it out and sort of play the devil's advocate, but overall, I'm happy if I'm a Jet fan getting my guy. When it comes to coordinators or college guys coming in for the first time, I'm with Will. You never know. I mean, I, I, I have no idea if he's going to be great, terrible, or anything in between. Likely, he'll be something in between. But at least today, I'm pumped up if I'm part of Gang Green because I got a guy that's going to fire me up, and I'm pretty down in the doldrums right now if I've been a fan of the Jets. Well done, gentlemen. Certainly appreciate the thoughts. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.